Hey guys, so I am doing this super impromptu and I did not say anything to anyone, so most likely nobody is here yet and that's okay, but hold on, I'm going to adjust things. I'm just going to hang out and wait for people to join. If you couldn't tell, I am in a hotel right now. I am, hey Nick, how are you? I'm like looking at my computer and at my phone at the same time. Hi Bailey, thanks for joining guys. You just happened to be on YouTube at the right time because I did not know I was gonna do this. Hi Jade, Jade you look so cute in your outfit for me. I loved it, I loved your Instagram post. Hi Paula, thanks for joining guys. So as you can tell, I'm not home. I'm like at a hotel right now because I am at um, a conference with students. It's like the Allstate Music Conference. So I have a student here for composition and I like, instead of going to the workshops and stuff, have been going thrifting. Hi Gloria, how are you? And I thought I would just pop on and share what kinds of goodies I've been thrifting. Hi Megan at Mixed Low, oh Mixed Lot Resale, I can't read, I'm sorry. Hi Sandy from Wisconsin, hi Natalie. You guys are awesome, thanks for joining me on Friday night. Um, yeah, hi swimmer one isation. Am I saying that right? It is fun. Oh my gosh, does it say park in the one? Yes, that's the inn that I'm at. <laughs> okay, don't come try to find me. Well, you can. We can hang out for real. But um, hopefully, like random people cannot just find me based off of this. Um, hi, C Joy and Danny. You guys are awesome. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for loving to watch my videos. I appreciate that. So yeah, so I went yesterday to. Let's see, I went to a Goodwill and I went to Ross and I found zero things at Ross. Like everyone is posting about all of their amazing finds at Ross. And I swear that the Ross that I went to, either someone went and like literally took everything that went on clearance or the Salvation Army that I went to today, they had so much new with tag stuff from like Target and TJ Maxx and Marshalls. And I wonder if maybe even Ross just like brought them. So I don't know, but I was inside of Ross for like five minutes and then I left because I'm not seeing all of the same things that everyone else and their mom seems to be finding at Ross. I don't know. Seek Joy, you didn't find anything either. Hi, Megan. Thank you for finding me live and hanging out with me. Nicholas, you found nothing too. Yeah, like I don't understand. I don't understand how all these people are finding all these amazing things. Marshalls too. Is, so is Marshalls doing their yellow tag sale right now? That's what I'm not understanding. I, I saw though that some people seem to have been going to, um, uh, what is it, Marshalls and getting some good stuff. What about Burlington? I have not been inside of a Burlington for like 10 years, so I don't know. I don't know anything about Burlington. I I know people like do retail arbitrage there, but I don't know how good it is or anything like that. Natalie, you got good stuff there. Oh, nice. And they're doing like a big sale right now? Or are they doing like a big clearance? Is that what's going on? Sneakers. Hmm. I picked up some sneakers. I don't know anything about sneakers. I don't know what kinds of sneakers are good or worth it. Like, I got a pair of New Balance. I forgot the name of it. But, yeah, I have no idea if it's any good. Um, Thrift Gal, hi. You got fry boots at Burlington? That's pretty good. Natalie, your husband is a sneakerhead. Does he watch that YouTube show? What's it called? Um, oh, man, this is going to bother me. You know, they have all those stores all over the country now. It's like for sneaker heads and um, they do like a lot of Bape and Supreme and that kind of stuff. Watch Akil McLeod. I do. I watch him. But it's like all the, like, you know, there's like New Balance shoes, but then which New Balance ones are worth picking up? Or there's like Nikes, but which, that's, I can't just like, I can't retain that information for some reason about like which shoes within those good brands are good to pick up. You know what I mean? Um... I pass Burlington all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't have one near me, so that's why I haven't gone to any, but I should. Okay, well, I'll show you a couple things that I got. I didn't get anything, like, amazing, but I got some new-to-me brands and some stuff that was just, like, fun, and we'll just go from there. Nike has style numbers. They do. I, I guess I'm just, I don't know. Like, sneakers don't excite me, and so I don't want to, like, take the time to, like, look up the style. I should, though, because I'm probably leaving money at the thrift store. 
Okay, so this is all from a Goodwill that I went to. And this Goodwill, I don't think is in like a very good part of town. So I don't, you know, they didn't have a lot of good stuff. The best thing that I found though, and if you follow me on Instagram, you saw I posted about it in my stories. I found this Monopoly collector's edition and it was the office Monopoly. And I picked it up just because I was like, I love the office and this might be kind of fun. Hey, joining Jojo, how are you? And I was like, yeah, this might be really fun. So I'll just pick it up and it was $2.99. And I also like was thinking about getting this other game because the other game was like sealed in the plastic and it was like a murder mystery game, something to do with grilling, I don't know. So I looked at the murder mystery game first and it had sold for like $2.50 and I was like, I'm gonna put that one back. But the Office Monopoly edition was going for like $100, $120 and even used and mine is used and I couldn't open it up because they like unfortunately got packing tape and like closed it so when I cut it open to see if all the pieces are there. I'll probably just like cut along the tape instead of like trying to rip the tape off the box cause it'll, you know, rip off some of the box itself. But um, yeah, even used ones are going upwards of like 80, 90, $100. So I am so excited about that. So that was definitely my best find. And other stuff that I got at this Goodwill was kind of like, Meh, like hey, it's okay. So the first thing I'll show you, it's the brand. Stefan Shrout and I mean it looked like a good tag so I was like I'll pick it up and it was a hundred percent linen and I could tell just when I saw it and it basically is like this khaki colored tunic I don't know I think it's more of a dress it really is a dress but it was in like the tunic or like shirt section so they priced it like a shirt and it has you know just kind of this nice embroidery on the front three-fourth sleeve and it was six dollars so I mean, 100% linen, and I did look up comps. It is definitely like a foreign brand. I want to say it's like some European brand. So the comps for it are more like international sales on eBay, but I still think I could hopefully get like in the $30 range for that. So that was my first thing. It does make me so sad when they tape the boxes. Flower collar, is that what that's called, Natalie? I, I have no idea. <laughs> I was just going to say embroidery along the neckline. I don't know. Um, yeah, Thrift Gal, I watch The Office religiously. Like, I've watched it a million times. I'm listening to The Office Ladies podcast. I am amazing at Office trivia. Like, it is, it's my favorite. Um, this is Peter Millar. Peter Millar is a popular men's brand. I think they do a lot of, like, golf wear. Am I making this up? I don't know. But it's, like, their summer comfort line. It's a size large, and it's just a blue polo. It's, like, that sweat wicking, what is it? Moisture wicking, I don't know. It's just a polo. And they wanted, do, 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 let's see. They wanted $4 for it. And I think I can get around like 25 or something. And it was in pretty good shape. So I'm trying to pick up more men's stuff because it sells very fast for me. So that's what I'm trying to actively do. And I'm actively trying to like hang out in the, <laughs> in the hard goods section so that I can find more stuff like Office Monopoly, but I just don't know a lot about hard goods. I really like this next dress. I don't know, I mean, I know that the brand isn't like, it doesn't have a huge following. I think it's a decent brand. It's found at like Nordstrom and stuff and Nordstrom Rack. It's just Truve. I don't know if I'm saying that right either. It's a size medium, but I really like this dress. I think I've actually sold it before. So it's like a tank dress, but it's got these, what do you want to call them? I don't know, you like tie it in the front or you can tie it on the side. I'm trying to get a better angle of this. And it's just very flattering. And it's got also this nice kind of like silky-ish material and it just hangs on the body really nice. Wrap dress, kind of like, but it doesn't wrap all the way around and it's not a wrap dress here. Like it's really kind of around, like right under the chest. I don't know how to explain it and I probably should have like tied it for you. But I'm hoping to get at least like 25 for it, maybe 30. But yeah, I mean, I know I've sold it before and I know it'll look good when I put it on the hanger or maybe even on my dress form. So we'll see about that. Um, I'm trying to see. Okay, I'll show that stuff later because this is from the second place that I went to. Sorry, I'm like not in the frame the whole time. Let's see. I, yeah, I didn't get a lot of stuff at this Goodwill because they just didn't have a lot of good stuff. 
I spent $64 at this first Goodwill. Okay, so the next thing I found, I was pretty excited about this. I don't know about you guys, I still get really excited about Adriana Goldschmidt because I barely find Adriana Goldschmidt. And this is the Stilt Roll-Up Cigarette Roll-Up Pants. This is in a size 28. I mean, I would love to get like in the 30s for this, but I don't know if I will. I feel like the resale value of Adriano Goldschmidt is kind of going down, but it's so expensive retail, like it's insane. Um, definitely thinking about picking up more men's too, says Leah or Leah. Leah or Leah? Tell me which one's right. One, Leah, or two, Leah because I know you can say it a bunch of different ways. Um, I, yeah, men's pieces move fast. It's like men are pretty unfussy when it comes to buying things or even like making offers. Like I feel like men are either really stingy and they offer you like a third of the asking price or they just buy it outright, you know, like they don't have time to like play those games of sending you offers and waiting for you and all that kind of stuff. Is there a list of men's brands that sell well? Newbie here. Hi, Megan. Um, one. So Leah. Leah, is that right? Okay, I think that's what I said first. Um, men's brands that sell well for me. Okay, let me think here. I like. I feel like Zara Man can sell well. It doesn't sell for a lot, but it sells pretty fast. Um... I don't feel like I pick up like super desirable men's brands either. So I don't know that. Like I just kind of get what people give me. Like Nike will do well. And you guys can help out. Like Adidas. I mean like a lot of the sports stuff can do really well. Like men's Lululemon obviously will do really well because it's Lululemon. Um, Levi's. Men's Levi's do really well. I have good luck with like American Eagle jeans for men too. Um... Man, what else? Oh, like I know really popular brands now too are like Untuck It. I actually found my first Untuck It piece today. Um, Natalie says, true religion jeans. I have had some men's true religion jeans and maybe I priced them too high. They did not sell like quickly, but they did sell for you know a good amount. Um, Tiffany says Poshmark is so slow. Tiffany, I actually have a video coming out tomorrow about what to do when Poshmark is really slow for you, so look out for that. Hi, Birdie Looks. Um, men's Levi's, yeah. Untuck it. Yeah, untuck it. It's spelled exactly the way you said it, Thrift Gal, except for instead of the E, there's an I. And, like, the point of the brand is for it to look good when it's not tucked in. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> um... Ashley, hi. Hi from Hawaii. Ugh, I'm already so jealous of you. It's disgusting outside. It's like raining and all this other stuff. Um, but yeah, those are the brands that typically do well for me. I feel like Lacoste, honestly, kind of still does well for me with, you know, for men. Um, and then like people will talk about the brand Carbon to Cobalt and I found a piece and I listed it and it's not getting a lot of action. But also men's pieces don't really get a lot of likes and stuff because again, Men aren't, men aren't really there like window shopping. Like if they want it, they'll just get it. They're not going to sit there and like heart your stuff. So I don't think that you have to wait for people to like your item. Thanks, Bolo Buddies. Um, and Mountain Hardware. Ooh, yeah, I could see that. John Varvatos. Um, okay, so I'm going to keep men's Lululemon, yes. So I'm going to keep going and show you what else I got. So this gave me... Um, empty hanger vibes. I cannot see what the brand is because it like faded off and I keep trying to like look, maybe I'll try to look it up by the RN number. Um, it's a size small, but it's just this like long oversized kimono with like a really pretty floral print to it. And when I look up the RN number, it'll probably end up being like Walmart or something, but I just thought it would be nice to have, even though I already have a lot of kimonos, in my Poshmark closet that are like boutique items because I got them wholesale. They're not really moving, but this is like in a really different style. It's sheer, it's lightweight. So I'm hoping that that does really well. Um, Lucky Brand, Lucky Brand is very hit or miss for me. Like sometimes it's really um, good and it moves fast, but sometimes it's not. All right, let's see what else. 
And then, okay, this is probably going to make me like $2, but I could not leave it behind. So it is a Disney DuckTales graphic tee. Look at how cute. And I kind of think it's vintage, but it like has some cracking in the graphic and stuff. But I just don't know who is like, you know, selling this kind of stuff. So hopefully this is pretty unique and there aren't a lot of these kinds of graphics out there right now. So that's what I'm hoping is my saving grace. It's not single stitch, but I mean, it could still be vintage. I don't know. But yeah, it's a size large. I just thought that was really cute. I paid $4 for it and I probably didn't need to, but that's okay. I just like had to save it. Yeah. Size small, Natalie. No, sorry. Sorry. Size large. I cannot read. But yeah, I thought that was so cute and I had to have it. It is so cute. Could still be vintage. Yes, it definitely could be. Unfortunately, there's no date on it, so I won't know for sure. So that is all I got, I think, at that first Goodwill that I went to, plus the Office Monopoly game, which was so cool. Paula said, <laughs> could you, this is off topic, but can you please talk your husband into doing a how to remove any scene from anything type video? Paula, basically what he does is he just keeps treating the stain over and over and over again until he gets the stain out. And like sometimes he will wash something like five or six times. But I think he literally just uses the um, shout like stain removal um, and he like soaks things for a long time. He's just very patient because it's like his pride. Like he doesn't want to let the stain win. So that's part of the reason why he's so good at it. Like he just does not give up. But I, I know I've talked to him. I'm like, you need to make this video. So we'll see. I, I want him to do it. Um, I want him to do like a haul video with me too, but I don't know. So the next place that I went to was a Salvation Army and it was like a half hour drive from where I'm staying right now. And I remember going there like two years ago and I was not super impressed by it, but it's really big. They have a ton of stuff and they have a ton of stuff because they get a lot of stuff from like the local targets and um, yeah, like Marshalls and TJ Maxx, like I said, the annoying thing is, you know, that when Target is clearancing down their stuff by like a new day or, you know, their other house brands, you know, that it drops to like a dollar 99, but then the Salvation Army gets it and tries to price everything at like nine ninety eight, And I'm like, what is that? Which is fine. Like I wouldn't be picking up that stuff anyway, but I, only had like 30 minutes to shop yesterday at Salvation Army. So I went to the shoe section first and I got a ton of shoes because they were actually priced pretty well. And then I had like just a few minutes to look at other stuff. But as I was checking out, I noticed that they had all these signs that they were gonna be putting up when they closed the store saying that tomorrow, which is today, they were gonna have this five pieces of clothing for $5 sale. So basically everything would be a dollar, excluding their red, ticket items because red ticket is like their boutique stuff and it's all of the stuff that's like new with tags and whatever so I you know I still checked out like all my clothes and whatever but I made plans to go back today and so today I spent like five and a half hours there and I think I got like around 70 or like 68 items that were part of that one dollar deal and then I got just like a couple other things that um, were not part of that $1 deal. But I'm like in so much pain right now. Like my back hurts. My, I don't know, like it, it's hard work. And I'm really short. I'm five feet. So especially going through those dresses, I'm literally like on my tiptoes. And I'm just like shoving. I mean, it was, it was a workout. So <laughs> that's, that's how I'm feeling right now. It was an Amber rush. Hi, Amber. <laughs> I said it was an Amber rush and it, it was an adrenaline rush. You are right, Amber. Um, it was fun though. So I'll show you some of the shoes that I got. Some of them are like, whatever, like they're not super amazing. Hi, Veronica. How are you? Thanks for joining. Um, but like I said, they were cheap. So the first pair of shoes are these Merrill like hiking sandals. And they're in really good shape, which is why I got them. I think Merrill is kind of hit or miss. Like sometimes it's worth a lot, sometimes it's not. But yeah, I got these to try out. The Modern Flip Studio. Hi, how are you? Um, some days I get back from thrifting and I'm more tired than after workout. Seriously, <laughs> like it was crazy. But yeah, these were $5.99 and they are the Merrill with the select grip. I don't know what that means. And they are a size... 
10, which is great because most women in this country do not have freakishly small feet like myself, and I think 10s are pretty common, right? But yeah, um, I also like have never experienced people writing the price on the bottom of the shoe. Do you guys use like nail polish remover? Is that what people use? Or just like a baby wipe? I don't know. Like I, I've never experienced this life before of prices written on the bottom of shoes. So any help would be helpful. Barefoot finds, yes, thrifting wears me out too. It's hard. It is hard, hard, hard. Okay, so this is, this is what I'm saying. I don't know a lot about shoes. So I know people talk about Tevas a lot. So these are Tevas, which I think are running shoes. <laughs> I don't know. Goo Gone? Oh, I have Goo Gone. Okay, good. Rubbing alcohol? Okay. I have both of those things. I use a dry erase. Bolo Buddies, thank you for the super chat. You are so sweet. I use a dry erase. It reactivates the permanent marker and comes right off. Dry erase, Paula, like a dry erase marker? Is that what you use? Magic eraser? Okay, I have those too. Okay, so I'll just try all of the things <laughs> and see what works. But yeah, these are Tevas. I don't know anything about Tevas. I just know that people pick up Tevas and these need a little bit of cleaning. I will, I mean, it looks like they were just sitting in someone's garage for like a while. There's like some dust and stuff, but it's easy cleaning and I am willing to do that much. I hate cleaning shoes and I don't really clean them very much before I take pictures of them. I just, I'm a, you know, sell it as is type of gal, but, um, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. Um, someone asked me something. Oh, modern flip studio. Okay. So are you ever scared of getting bug bugs? I'm not because I feel like I would see them. Aren't they like pretty big? Like they're, you can see them pretty well. And I do inspect my clothes pretty well before I um, leave the thrift store. So usually like I'll do a quick scan before I even put it in the cart. But then before I leave, I always, you know, reserve like 10, 15 minutes to go through everything. And I check, you know, like the main things. So I'll check like pits. I'll check um, like hems and make sure that they're not coming undone. For men's shirts, I'll check like the collar to make sure that there's no yellow ring. Um, and I'll just make sure there's no pulls or holes or whatever. And as I'm doing my scan, I feel like if there were bed bugs, I would see them. But I don't know. Like, is that something that happens pretty um, frequently to resellers? Like, do people bring home bed bugs? I don't know. That would be really scary. Don't thrift stores have to spray everything before it goes out? I doubt it, Megan. <laughs> I doubt they're spending a lot of time spraying stuff. But that's me being pessimistic. Um, the next thing I, again, I... Like, I see this brand a lot, and I see some people sell it a lot. I picked these up because they thought that they were cute. It's Born, which I think, you know, I think Born can be good. That's the brand if you haven't seen it. It's a really cool wedge. Like, I really like this pattern and, like, the stripes and the different colors. And it's a leather upper, and I think that, you know, the upper looks really nice. These are a size 7. So I just got these to try out. They were $4.14 which is a really odd price to me, but I was, I was here for it. I don't know. I think I could get like mid twenties for these. I think they're really cute. So, oh, this lighting is awful. It's really bad. Um, let's see more stuff about bed bugs. Hi from Dallas. Hi, Laura. Um, oh, so you're saying modern flip studio that people have been talking about bed bugs more on Instagram. See, I've not been seeing that. Nick Pickthrift says bugs are not as common as they used to be. And as long as you put your stuff in a bag and tie a knot and just keep it in the closet for a day or two, that will suffocate all of them if they did have bed bugs. Um, nice. Bolo Buddies, you put everything in your deep freezer for a week. That's smart. That's awesome. I need to invest in one, I guess. I don't have a deep freezer. Um, I guess maybe from now on. I mean, it usually takes me such a long time to get to the stuff that I've thrifted because I have other stuff that, you know, I need to process. So maybe I'll just try to like keep everything in bags and um, seal them up so that if there are bed bugs, I can suffocate them. I don't know. Glass and sparkle. Um, you said, hi, I know this is random, but you posted a vlog a while back with a snippet of you singing. It was so lovely. Would you ever consider posting a singing video or possibly serenade us today? Oh dear. So my voice is in rough shape, but I mean, I could try. Let me know if you have any requests. If you have good requests that I feel like I could do, I will consider it. <laughs> How about that? The Modern Flip Studio, I put my stuff in the dryer because I'm scared. And I do steam my stuff too, and I imagine that um, bed bugs would die while I'm steaming them. 
Um, Amber Riesel says, yes. I actually was in, I was like part, I, I was like in the chat for a video when um, Ryan and Jack from Jack Valentine's YouTube video or YouTube channel when they went live and they were like talking to me about um, uh, singing and I was going to try and post something on my Instagram and tag them in it. But I just sounded like garbage. So I was like, oh, forget it. Hi, Swamp Picker. How are you? Good to see you. Okay. Um, I think that's all the shoes that I got. And then I have one more little bag from uh, the Salvation Army. And then at some point, like in my car right now, I have two Ikea bags that are filled to the brim, plus like five other um, plastic bags because it, they, we couldn't fit them all in the Ikea bags of stuff from the Salvation Army today. So... At some point, I will haul that stuff. I'll probably not do that live because there's so much stuff. I wanted to try and do it today, but I don't want to, like, drag all that stuff into the hotel room and then, yeah. And plus, my students will be like, why do you have so much random clothes with you? And I'll, yeah. So the last two things that I got, I believe, are, oh, they're not the same brand. So this is, they're both velvet, though. So this is Soft Surroundings. If you guys follow JS Thrifts and Flips on um, Instagram, you know how much she is obsessed with soft, surrounding, soft surroundings. And I actually love soft surroundings too. I feel like it sells really well. Swamp Picker says, I see a park in rides. <laughs> Swamp Picker, I am at a hotel right now, and the hotel is called Park Inn, I think, which is very funny. It's very ironic, but um, yeah, that's why you see that sign. Um, hi Megan. Thanks for joining. It's okay that you're late. I didn't announce that I was doing this. I just hopped on live. But this is the uh, soft surroundings top. It's just like this velvet green velvet shirt, but it's got these huge like flare sleeves. I think they're so fun. This would have been really great if I could have, you know, found this and listed it before the holidays, I feel like, because I feel like this green is so Christmassy. But regardless, like, I think it'll sell and, like, it has kind of that boho feel because of the sleeve and because it's just such a rich color. I don't know. So I was excited to find that. And, you know, if I had bought it today, it would have been a dollar. But who knows if it would have still been there when I got there. So I picked it up. Um, Jamie, you sold the soft surroundings for $35. Yeah, like, some soft surroundings can go for a lot. And I, I love it. I love the brand. Thrift, I mean, I don't personally wear it. I've never found anything that, like, was my size that I like the style of, but I would not be opposed to wearing it. Gloss and Sparkle, what is my favorite song to sing or one that means a lot to you? I think we all love that. Okay, let me brainstorm here. Megan Steele, Soft Surroundings has always been a great seller and fast flip for me. Laura says, I think you have a beautiful voice. That's very nice of you. <laughs> the scary thing about singing live is I can't go back and edit it, like, if my voice cracks or something. Um, okay, let me think. What do I like to sing? I like to sing lots of different things, but I'm also horrible at memorizing lyrics. So yeah. What do you think about Loft or Ann Taylor? Natalie, I think that Loft and Ann Taylor are great brands. They do not resell for a whole lot. And I think that that's because people can find so much Loft and Ann Taylor at their own thrift stores. And Loft and Ann Taylor often run sales at their own stores where they're selling stuff for so cheap. So people have a hard time spending a lot of money on it. I like to put Loft and Ann Taylor in my four for $25 sale because people like it and they'll pick it up. They just don't want to spend a lot of money on it. So if you can pick it up for super cheap, like at the bins or something, and it's really cute, it's not like a basic shirt or something like that, it can be worth it. Um, you're just not going to get top dollar for it. And it's because it's so saturated on Poshmark and other places. Um, do you have something that is original so YouTube does not pull the video? Will YouTube pull the video if I sing a song that is copyrighted? I did not know that. I thought it was if you like played their original version of the song. That's crazy. Um, do I have success with 4 for 25? Natalie, I do. I mean, some weeks more than others, like sometimes I'll have like a two week stretch and I don't sell any four for $25 bundles. And then some weeks I'll have like two or three bundles that sell as part of that sale. And then oftentimes too, a lot 
uh, like what'll happen is people will just buy like one item from that sale or two items from that sale and they don't really want to bundle it, which is fine. The thing I like about running a four for $25 sale is that if somebody those items, then I go ahead and tell them about the sale. And then that often leads to a bigger sale than them just buying that one thing. Or maybe like they wouldn't have just bought that one thing, but because they're able to find more things and now they're getting a great deal, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll do that. Um, Bolo Buddies, I'm not 100% sure I could be wrong. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think so on signing. Oh, on singing. Hmm. I think it is playing the song, like you said. No, they won't pull it if you make sure that you put in the description that it's a cover of the song. Um, I can't monetize it. Whoa, that's crazy. I think you can sing. I'm watching people sing every day. Other people, some, lol. Just use a Clorox wipe. Okay, let me, th do I have an original? I do have some originals. Do I remember the lyrics to said originals? That's, that's the main question. Um, let me think. Okay, I'll try to do a little bit of one song that I wrote when I was, I want to say in college. I think I wrote it in college, and I don't remember what I titled it, because I don't, I just don't remember things, guys. I don't know what's wrong with me. Sorry, I'm trying to, like, go into my video settings and do something. Um, okay, yeah, let me try to do a little bit of this song. We'll see how it goes. Ooh, okay. You guys are making me nervous. Let's see, how much of it do I remember? Okay. I think I'm gonna sleep very well tonight. I hear you whisper in the dimly lit moonlight. I don't know the next part. <laughs> okay, let me get to the chorus. What are the words to the chorus? Like, I can't remember the words, people. I just remember the melody. Okay, uh, snippets of it are coming back to me. Okay, let me, let me see if I remember. Let the moon fall down. No. Let the sun fall down. Let the moon come out. And when the night falls, I'm with you. Nothing can touch us here When you wake, I'll be near So close your eyes Close your eyes That's all I remember. I don't know. And like I said, my voice is garbage right now, so I apologize. And my face looks crazy when I sing. Okay, that is all I will do. Thank you guys. You guys are so nice. <laughs> so nice. Rhea, you are so sweet. The Modern Flip Studio says, do your boutique items sell as fast as your thrifted items? Usually, no, they don't. <laughs> Glass and Sparkle, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, Megan Steele said, where can we buy this? You can't buy it anywhere because, oh, Amber, you heard too much. <laughs> you were so sweet. Um, I don't know. Like, I, I like singing, and I sing a lot at church and obviously sing at school, but that's more to, like, you know, show my kids, like, how their parts go and stuff. I don't know that I love performing and I don't know. I'm really weird about being in the spotlight. Like I'm okay with being in the spotlight and I'm okay with like, you know, a lot of people looking at me and all. it's not like I get nervous, but I think I'm more weirded out by the aftermath. Like, like even you guys being very Nick pick thrift. Thank you for the super chat. You guys are all so kind. Thank you. Um, I don't know how to deal gracefully with the aftermath of what happens after you perform I don't want things to like get to my head and I, I don't know so I feel like I would be very it would be very dangerous for me to like go into a field where I had to perform a lot I don't know but yeah you guys are very sweet thank you so much I appreciate it um Gloria you are mm, you are too sweet um and Bolo Buddies, thank you for reminding people to hit the like button. Yes, if you guys have not done so, it does help out my channel, so I would appreciate it. Um, I have one more thing to show you, and then we can just kind of hang out. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, we can just talk about those things. When I was, like, a part of um, Ryan and Jack's live 
video. It was like a few days ago. They literally were live for like three hours. <laughs> so I promise I will not do that to you. Plus I have to go back to the civic center where the kids are and I have to pick them up after the jazz camp, uh, the jazz concert that they're listening to. But, um, Bolo Buddies, you're amazing. So the last thing that I got was a new with tags free people and I paid way too much for it. But I don't know. I was just like, I'll just get it. It's just, again, kind of like this velvety, like a crushed velvet shirt. Basically like a sweatshirt. It's got these big sleeves. And it's We The Free. It was $68 retail. And I paid like $16 for it because I'm stupid. I don't know. Also because I was like, maybe I'll just keep it for myself because I could use more stuff like this. I mean, I will probably at least be able to double my money if I... Um, saw that on Poshmark or eBay. It was a really dumb buy, especially because I went and bought like 70 things today and I did not need it. Um, Jamie said I couldn't watch their whole video because it was so long. <laughs> it was very long. It was fun though. I just like had it on in the background while I was doing other stuff. So, it, it, you know, it's kind of fun to just feel like you're like hanging out with people and chit chatting and stuff like that. Marty, you sold that shirt for $25. Was yours news, uh, new with tags? Because if so, I'm kind of screwed. Um, Megan says, how does free people do for everyone? It literally sits in my closet. I don't find it very often. And so when I do, it usually actually does pretty well. It depends though. Like, um, I found a dress at Plato's closet and it sold within like two days for very close to my asking price. So I think sometimes it can do really well. They're more basic pieces, definitely are harder sells and their older pieces are harder sells. So you have to kind of get stuff that is more current, I think. Um, hi, Lucy. How are you? Thanks for joining. You're so sweet. Lucy, you missed it. They made me sing. It was not very good, though. <laughs> um, Alyssa, basics are harder to sell. Yeah, they are. They're much harder to sell. Um, okay, I had a question for you guys, and I would love to hear your input and your feedback. So on February 27th, which I believe is a Thursday night, um, I am going to do a YouTube live show, but... I'm doing it in an effort to raise money for my theater group because we made it to nationals. They did the show, The Theory of Relativity in the fall, and we are trying to take it to Indiana University, which isn't very far from us, but we have to, it's like a week long event. So it's like $1,000 per kid for the conference itself. And then also for lodging and um, for, uh, transportation. Plus we have to pay to like get our set there and we have to pay our musicians and it, it's a whole thing. Hi, Diana. Thank you for joining. And so we're doing all of this fundraising, but the problem with fundraising is that fundraising always hits up the same people, I feel like. So I'm going to do a live show where I want to kind of do a few things. One is I want to auction off stuff, but I kind of feel like, well, and you guys, this is where I would love your feedback. Does it make sense to auction off like individual items? Would people prefer that you think? Or if I did like lots of stuff and the way that we're gonna do it is people are gonna donate stuff kind of like if we were running a garage sale, um, but people are gonna donate stuff and then I will go through it before the live video and just make sure that it's stuff that people would be interested in. And yeah, so I wanna auction it off live and I still have to kind of figure out like what that would look like. I know some of you, I think Bolo Buddies had sent me the name of a channel who does a lot of like uh, a lot of live auctions on his channel. So I was going to try that. Maybe a mix of both of us. So yeah, that makes sense. Like some things would stand well on their own. And then some things like no one's going to bid on a random Nike shirt or something. So maybe I would do a lot of like exercise wear and then a lot of like plus size stuff or something like that. And then if there are really amazing things that could be sold on their own, maybe I would do that. Okay, that's a good idea. And then the other thing is I was going to have like kids sing and like maybe I would sing, um, but kind of do like a show and tell of the kids that you're supporting. Plus, you know, um, it would be stuff for resellers because they could buy stuff to sell or buy stuff to keep. Um, but it would be more money than if we were to hold a garage sale. Plus garage sales are a lot of work. <laughs> like we've done a lot of garage sales um, because I am a teacher and <laughs> I love garage sales and resale, you know, all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, they've just been a lot of work. 
So I feel like this would be a cool way to still incorporate the reseller community and basically um, ask them for their money, <laughs> but in a way where it would make sense to them. But like, I don't know, do you guys have any other suggestions for that idea? Just like from your perspective, what kinds of things you would like to see, um, that sort of thing? Let me know. Um, let's see. A lot of people are saying I should do it both ways. And I, yeah, I think that makes sense. Like, I think it makes sense to have the items that are worth a lot on their own and then do lots for the smaller items. Donatella Bodolino and auctions for you do YouTube auctions. Okay, so I, you have to have a license to do auctions? Wow. Maybe you do a reseller a lot. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'm going to look up those people and ask them about or maybe just try to like watch one of their auctions. Do you guys do YouTube auctions? Have you guys ever sat in on those? Bolo Buddies, are they geared towards resellers or just people who want to like buy stuff on the cheap? I don't know how that works. You can auction your own stuff. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't want to like pay someone else to do the like a dollar, a dollar. Can I see a dollar? Anyone have a dollar? <laughs> like I, I feel like I could do that by myself. So I don't know. Um... Thrifting Wander Luster used to do them as well. Oh, okay. Maybe I'll ask her. What if you did like a mystery designer piece auction? That'd be cool. I My only fear with like doing mystery stuff is I'd be scared that people would be disappointed. Like I feel like I'd really want to be like, here are all the things that will be sent to you um, so that people know exactly what they're getting. That's why I just get so scared of recent, uh, like the mystery boxes. I've never sold them myself. And I've gotten a couple and not really, like, thought very highly of them. Just because, I don't know, it's like you're waiting for it in anticipation and you're, like, super excited. And usually your hopes are much higher than what you actually end up getting. So, I don't know. Bola Buddy says, T would do it free for you. I'm almost sure of it. I need to ask this T then. Okay. Donatella Bodolino buys storage units and resells them at her auctions. That's so cool. Um, you may be able to find her old videos on her channel. Yes, I will look. I've never seen that, but that sounds really cool. Bolo Buddies, thank you. You are so sweet. By the way, there are a couple people in this chat who have um, YouTube channels, and you should definitely check them out. Bolo Buddies being one of them because she does a really cool thing where Bolo Buddies, you have like a Facebook group. Is that how it works? And she will kind of like highlight sometimes someone in her Facebook group who has been selling some really cool stuff and she'll like go and show you what that person has been selling for a good amount of money. And then sometimes she will do like themed Bolo videos and Bolo, by the way, in case you don't know, means be on the lookout. She'll do videos. Like I saw one because I'm a loser who really likes stickers. <laughs> she did an entire video on Bolo stickers and how there are people out there that will spend like $90 for four stickers. And I would have never known that. Like I know that I myself as a human being spend an ungodly amount of money on stickers, but I didn't know that there was a market for vintage stickers. So if you wanna learn about like the very obscure niche niches, why did I say niches? Niches that exist and you know in the reselling world, Bolo Buddies is such a cool channel. Obviously, like I saw Amber Resells was here. Amber has a great YouTube channel. Very analytical, very numbers driven. And you can learn a lot from her as far as like, um, and she's very honest too about her reselling journey and like her sales. Like she'll be very honest with you if she sells something and she loses money on the item, um, which I really appreciate. Like I think a lot of times we see everyone's highlights but we don't necessarily see the whole picture. And I feel like Amber does a really good job of showing the whole picture. So those are two video, uh, two channels that I saw, you know, they were in the chat. I wanna make sure that I um, highlight them. Uh, so Lindsay's Posh Loft, what have I missed? So much, you missed so, no, I'm just, you didn't miss much. I hauled a couple things. I showed some stuff that I thrifted yesterday. Um, and then I was just talking about a live show that I want to do to raise money for my students as well as just kind of shouting out some people to um, uh, some people's YouTube channels that you should check out. Um, 
Bola Buddies, I just did a video on paper products that you should never throw away. Yeah, I mean, I'm telling you guys, like if you wanna learn about some super random stuff to be on the lookout for, check out Bola Buddies, it's, it's really cool. She just did one on like Valentine's Day stuff. She has other holiday themed ones. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I don't know, do you guys have any questions for me about anything? I can, we can hang out for like another 15 minutes and then I will check in with um, the kids who are at the jazz concert. They're gonna be there for a while because you know how jazz is, like it just goes on and on and on. But um, let me know if you guys have any questions. DNC Fly says, have you had much success selling in the home section of Poshmark? No, I have not. I, yeah, I mean, I have sold a couple things, but mm, I'd rather sell that stuff on eBay because I don't know. I don't feel like people's first thought is, hey, I'm looking for some Pottery Barn curtains. Let me go check out Poshmark. Like, you know what I mean? So I don't know. Um... Amanda, any tips for making first eBay sale? I'm trying to think of what was my very first eBay sale. I sold a pair of shoes, I remember. I think that they were Donald J. Pliners. I mean, I don't know what my tip would be necessarily in terms of like selling your very first thing. I would say like probably price on the lower end just because... When you are selling on eBay, people care a lot about whether or not you have any feedback. So like next to your name, there's a number that shows how many um, people have left you feedback, positive feedback saying that you are a trusty and reliable eBay seller. And when they see that you have no feedback, people are kind of hesitant to buy from you because they don't know if they're gonna get what you're saying you're gonna sell them. So you have to almost kind of make it like irresistible for them and sell something that, you know, the price is just too good for them to pass up. So they're willing to take a chance on you. For that reason, I would suggest maybe selling something that, um, you know, you don't really care that much for. Maybe it's a personal item of your own, um, but something that people are looking for too. So, I mean, that's like the best way to get your first eBay sale quickly, I would say. But Lucy said it, I mean, she said patience and it does take patience, so I don't know. Um, Moya, it's been a while, re-listing. Hmm. Thank you, Lucy. <laughs> I was like, there's some weird stuff happening. Um, let's see, I'm trying to, what do you know about Depop? I know nothing about Depop. I think Depop has something to do with, it has something to do with like vintage stuff, right? Like I think people are predominantly listing vintage t-shirts and stuff on there, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, Amber, this person's keeping you busy. I mean, not Amber, Lucy, thank you. You're doing awesome. You're doing a good job. Um, towards Zen, by, or Generation Z, but yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I also tried Relove and I think maybe they've made some adjustments since I started, but the payout structure was like really confusing to me. Like I didn't really understand how it was working. And I remember like I sold something on it and I was talking to someone on the phone for like 15 minutes about how come I'm only making X number of dollars from that sale. And it was just really weird. Yeah, I don't know. Um, hide user. Sorry, I'm just getting rid of someone <laughs> from our chat people. Um, Tiffany, do I just get rid of all the likes? Hmm, I feel like I missed something. I'm trying to go back. Any tips for a list? Oh, any tips for a listing that has many likes and gets lots of attention, but no one is interested in buying? I do private offers and price drops to the lowest, but no luck, says Tiffany. Yeah, I mean... Is it like a uh, more younger brand, like pink or something like that? Because I feel like when you have brands that like a lot of like, you know, high, like upper teens or like low 20s, like that age group, if you have a brand that those kinds of ages like, a lot of times they're window shopping, you know, so they'll like an item, but they don't really have any intention of buying it. So it is painful to think of relisting that item and losing those likes, but 
if you've already sent out offers to likers at your lowest and they're not buying it, they're not going to buy it. So it's okay to just say bye to those likes and relist it. That is what I would do. Um, Megan Poland says, Depop doesn't protect the sellers. I feel it's easier to get ripped off. Well, that's not good. You don't want that. Um, Raya, Raya, I don't know if I'm saying your name right, but she said, I love watching your mystery box videos and how systematic you are to Amber resells. I absolutely agree. Amber is just so systematic and it's so cool. Um, Thrift Gal says, can you speak about social media and sales? I think it can help. I think it especially helps if you tend to carry a lot more like trendier pieces in your closet. Um, I know too that some people are doing more like Instagram direct sales through like their stories and stuff. So, you know, before they post stuff on Poshmark, they will put stuff in their stories and they'll say like, oh, look, like this is something that's going to go on Poshmark. Um, if you're interested, you know, you can buy it here first for a discounted price because you don't have to pay for the Poshmark or like I don't have to account for the Poshmark or eBay fee. And some people have success doing that. I have made like a couple sales doing that, but I don't feel like I typically find a lot of those like super trendy pieces in my town. Like I'm not finding Reformation or Good American or, you know, like I don't feel like the soft surroundings client or, you know, person who's buying brands like soft surroundings or, you know, that kind of stuff is necessarily on Instagram. Um, but I think it, you know, it can be really good. Um, let's see. <laughs> Becky the bouncer strikes again. Seriously. <laughs> um, do you have any of your old sticker books? Um, t -t 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 Amber Rizal's. Well, you and I, yeah, we need to talk about that later. Paula, you got a jet. I got a jet too super soon, guys. But um, let's see. Maybe if there's like one more question. Lucy, right? Amber is so diplomatic. Like, I don't know how people get mad at Amber. <laughs> That's kind of ridiculous. Um yeah, so I don't know, guys. I just got a text saying that the jazz concert is on their last song. So I am going to go and pick people up. And I had a lot of fun hanging out with you guys, as always, because you guys are awesome. Let me see. There were a couple of last comments that came in. I think that people will know this is for charity, and that is a fantastic deal. It's probably not going to be expected. True, true. Moy, um, Becky, I've been reselling for years and took your advice and started telling people outside of family what I do, and they've been so generous. Yes. And I don't know if I'm saying your name right. Moye. Moye. Sorry. But yes. Like if you tell people what to do and if you have good relationships with people, they want to help you, you know. So if like they can help you by giving you their clothes that they're not going to wear anymore, like of course they'll do it. So and, you know, I have some friends who like want something for their clothes and that's fine too. Like I'll do 50-50 consignment deals with some people and it's fine. I, I'll pay them up front for what I think would be 50% of what I would make um, just so that I don't have to track things because I don't have the time for that. But um, yes, like people need to tell other people what they do because you can get a lot of free stuff. How does faux fur sell for you? I don't know. I don't know that I've really tried to sell faux fur. Hi, Syed. I don't know if I'm saying your name right either, but hello. Charity show, Amanda, yes, thank you. Um, hopefully I have a voice by then and we'll see. Um, Brenda, thanks for watching our videos. You're awesome. Yes, Moya, you need to speak up. Like you need to tell people what you do. Um, thank you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and peace out here so that I can pick up my kiddos and they're not like stranded. But you guys are awesome for hanging out. Somehow you got me to sing and <laughs> all that good stuff. You guys are very kind for all of the nice things that you were saying. But yeah, I will see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out and bye-bye. You guys are awesome.